Greetings adventurers! So, as you may be aware by now, I'm a big fan of TTRPGs and a big fan of mythical creatures. And today I want to combine those interests in the first of what will hopefully be an ongoing series called Demigods and Monsters. In each video, I plan to draw and talk about one of the creatures from British mythology that my players encountered in our Demigods PBTA campaign. Without further ado, because I wouldn't want to bore you too much, see what I did there? Let's talk about the legend of Turk Troif. So, Turk Troif. Let's see if I can maintain the same pronunciation for the length of this video. Turk Troif is a giant boar from Welsh mythology and you can read about him in the Mabinogium. He's a major antagonist in the story of Kulhuk and Olwen. I'm not going to go into details of that story here, mostly because it's really long. But if you are interested, I recommend checking out Dale Kingsmill's video on the subject over at Monarch's Factory. I'll put a link in the description below. She retells it better than I ever could. Anyway, what you need to know is that Kulhuk wants Olwen's hand in marriage and her dad, a giant, will only agree to it if Kulhuk embarks on the longest and most ridiculous fetch quest in history. If you've ever played an RPG video game, you'll be familiar with the structure. You need to collect this thing, but to do so, you have to have that thing. But to get that thing, you have to do this other thing first. It's like that. Only worse. Fortunately, Kulhuk has King Arthur and his knights to help him, so doesn't have to do any of the actual work himself. Something Olwen's dad gets pretty salty about. Among the many, many items that need to be collected, Olwen's dad wants Kulhuk to get a comb, a razor and shears because he needs a haircut. Olwen's dad, that is. Kulhuk has already had a haircut. Hair care is a surprisingly important feature of Welsh mythology. But he doesn't want just any comb, razor and shears. He wants the ones trapped in the fur of the giant boar, Tuk Troif. How am I doing on the pronunciation front? Tuk Troif used to be a human king, but because of unspecified sins, God had transformed him into a giant boar. And at this time, he was living in Ireland. Arthur gathered an army from the free islands of Britain, from France and Normandy and Brittany, and also from Somerset, because apparently that was a separate country at the time too. And they all crossed the water, and for nine days and nine nights, they fought Turk Troif and his seven children and laid waste to one fifth of Ireland. And they failed to get any of the razor, the comb or the shears. And after nine days and nine nights of massive collateral damage, Arthur thinks to himself, you know, maybe I should have tried talking to him first. So Arthur sent Gur here, who could change into a bird because magic, to go and talk to the Boar King and explain that Arthur just wanted the razor, the comb and the shears. Unsurprisingly, Turk Troif was less than amused. Are you kidding me? He said. It's bad enough that God cursed me to be a boar, but you've come to my home, wrecked up the place and killed one of my kids. Unprovoked, I might add. And you tell me you did all that because you just wanted my comb? Short answer, no. Longer answer, hell no. My piglets and I are going to go over the sea to Arthur's home and we're going to wreck that place real good and we're going to see how he likes it. Only he said all that in pig, which apparently Gur here could speak, because magic. Anyway, Turk Troif and his now six little pigs head over to Wales and proceed to make good on their word. They landed at Portglace, near St David's Head in Pembrokeshire, and charged inland through Haverford's West, destroying cattle as they went. The boar headed north towards the Preseli Mountains and fought Arthur's men from the Nevin Valley to the Cairn Valley, 
Here they killed Gwathagid and Tarog and Radun and Iskofan and Gurder and Gaesalid and... You get the idea. The Boars killed a lot of people. In Peliniog, they killed the free servants of Gluilid Gafelfor, leaving only the most useless one alive. Arthur's men continued to chase and continued to take heavy losses. At Abatui, Trugtroif killed Gwilein, king of France. But then he disappeared and Arthur lost his trail. Things were not going well for Arthur and he summoned Gwyn, son of Nud, for help. Now, this is a big deal. According to some, Gwyn is identified with Arun, the ruler of the Welsh underworld. He may also be the leader of the Wild Hunt. So, you know, kind of an important figure. And Arthur asks him if he knows how they can stop Trugtroif. And Gwyn shrugs and says, I don't know. And that is the end of Gwyn's involvement in this story. Arthur unleashed his hounds and they tracked Trugtroif towards the Black Mountain. And there Arthur's men killed all but two of the remaining piglets. But Trugtroif himself remained unharmed and the razor comb and the shears were no closer to being retrieved. Grugin, one of the piglets, broke away from his father and galloped north towards what is now Aberystwyth. There he found himself surrounded by hounds and huntsmen. He killed many of them, but in the end, the dogs overwhelmed him. Cluidog, the remaining piglet, headed east towards Lyn Ifan Fawr. There he fought the men of Brittany and killed their king, Hir Pezog a couple of Arthur's uncles, and a whole bunch of unnamed people besides. But eventually he too is overcome, and now Trugtroif is all alone. The Boar King continued to raise a path of destruction through the Toy Valley, before turning south, where Arthur was preparing to make his last stand at the estuary of the River Severn. Trugtroif has killed many of my men, he said, but all that ends here. I will engage him in mortal combat, and he will not enter Cornwall as long as I am still alive. They drove the boar into the river and grabbed him by his feet so that he was submerged. Marbon, son of Modron, grabbed the razor from the boar's fur. On the other side, Kiladir grabbed the shears. But before they could take the comb, Trugtroif got his feet back on dry land. In his wake, the river claimed the lives of more of Arthur's men. Kakamari, who had been holding the boar down, found himself trapped beneath the water by heavy stones. Osla Gwilelfor, who had lost his sword in battle, found his empty scabbard filling with water, the weight of which dragged him too into the merciless river. Despite Arthur's best efforts, the boar was now rampaging through Cornwall. All appeared hopeless, the situation grim. Picture the end of The Empire Strikes Back, or Avengers Infinity War. Now is the time for one epic last stand. To quote the Mabinogion, whatever trouble he had caused before was mere play compared to what they then suffered seeking the comb. Sounds exciting. So what exactly happened? But after one difficulty and another, the comb was taken from him. Did the writer get bored or something? Did he run out of time before his deadline? Maybe he got writer's cramp from documenting all those places and the names of the people who died. And I'm sorry, but anticlimactic as that is, that is the end of the tale. But what of Turk Troif? Was Arthur able to kill him? Well, apparently not. Instead, he was driven into the sea where, I guess, he remains to this day. So next time you're taking a channel ferry, you might want to keep an eye out for giant boars. I hope you enjoyed this story. I look forward to doing this again sometime. I can't promise that the next one will be quite as ridiculous, but I'm hoping. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe so I can keep making more of this nonsense. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.